are now we're in the second half, and this is basically the, the start of the of the second half um, and their kickoff, and really just um, highlighting they get a chance here from sloppy play by us, but you know initially good pressure here wins us the ball immediately. We're playing pretty quickly here, one touch, which I like between those three players. Good by Ethan to play away from pressure um, and find Jake. So we're you know starting our basically our building out of the back. You know, probably not the best long ball attempt here. It's not really finding anybody. I think you're probably trying to find Billy here. I'm not sure exactly who, but, you know, Billy looks to be the closest player, right? You know, so they, they're able to get the ball back but not keep the ball for very long. Ball goes out of bounds. We'll fast forward here. And this is the part I need. we need to improve, right? When we win the ball, we got to play quickly, right? And here, Daniel just takes too many touches on the ball, trying to dribble too much through the midfield. And this is what leads to it from it. All right, a ball in behind, which is where, you know, their fastest player. And really, if Tyler doesn't block that ball, it's a goal. Okay, you can see what can happen when players are deciding on their own to basically not play to what I'm looking for, the principles that I'm looking to you that we're looking to use as a team. So we're looking to pass the ball out of this instead of dribble. And there are players available, right? Just got to go away from the pressure. You know, I wouldn't have mind if he had gone away a bit more and looked to play backwards um, if you are dribbling. But trying to go through them just after we've just won the ball, usually this is where you get caught in possession, trying to dribble through them. They're putting pressure from behind. They're putting pressure from the front. And this is what basically the turnover here leads to a, a ball over top. And this guy's very fast, as you'll see in another clip. Right, doesn't have to be an accurate ball. He's he's very fast. He's probably faster than Jake, um, or as fast as Jake. So ball in, it puts pressure on Tyler. Jake's able to recover, but and we know good defensive here positioning. As you'll see, if Jake goes, Tyler works on the inside, which I think is good. This is positive play. But if Tyler's not there to block that ball, it's a goal. So just wanted to highlight here again the, that you know in this case it's Daniel. But we got to keep the ball moving to between players. Let's not get stuck on the ball trying to do too much. Let the ball do the work. Let our, our thinking off the ball, our players off the ball, finding the next player who's available, next player, next player. It's team ball. Team dynam dynamics here will, will break them down. And I think what you can see here when we don't do that, when we don't play to the game plan, what we don't play when we don't play to the way we've been training, it throws us off. And you can see here they get a chance basically – uh, because we're sloppy with in possession, and they're able to get you know a decent effort on goal. Another sequence here um, of us attacking, just some good ideas. Not necessarily the execution isn't the greatest, but some just good idea. Good pressure here initially, right? We're, you can see the attitude is that we're you know we need to up the tempo, so players are working really hard to win the ball back. They're not able to keep the ball with any real consistency, and we win the ball back pretty easily. And this is a good idea by Daniel. Uh, to look for this ball. It's a, it's a quick decision, which is what I like. You know, first of all, he doesn't take too many touches and not dribbling too long. Probably had um, an opportunity here to hit the ball into space as opposed to trying to find a ball on the ground because both Tyler and Billy are on here. Just got to hit the ball further, right? I think we got to get the ball in the, behind this defender, put pressure on them going this direction. I think had you done that, now you see these guys attacking that back post. We would have broken them down, really, right? It's three. We have a number of players going forward, one, two, three, four, five. And I think this is where we need to do a better job, just the quality of the ball. The idea is right, the quality has to be better so that we don't get it cut out. We win the ball back here pretty easily. And this is another good pass, but here by Daniel, he's playing away from pressure, which is what I like. You know, does he does turn in because like the defender is, is overplaying him. Okay, but he's shielding and he's got his head up looking to play. So and this is what happens when you do that. All right. I don't mind in this situation, especially if you're decent with on the ball and can shield the ball, if you can get your head up and look. It's the part where you're dribbling and you're not looking up that I don't like. So this is good play, right? You're shielding the defender off, you're finding that next pass and you're penetrating. It's a good pass in behind, right? Just a little sloppy here in the end, you know, with our touches. Doesn't, you know, doesn't necessarily come off for us, but um, you know, you can see the ideas were pretty good. First on the diagonal ball to Billy, and then second with the penetrating pass to Jack, um, you know, saw some good stuff there, you know, from Daniel in terms of his ideas. Um, and nearly got in behind, but not, you know, in this case, we weren't able to break them down completely. Now, here's another example of just a little bit, you know, poor possession out of the back where we need to do a better job of just make, helping the center backs make a better decision. In this case, Raphael, 
you know, is indecisive. He looks indecisive. He's trying to find a pass, and it really, I'm not sure who he's passing to. Okay, the, the the angle isn't there, and this is where I think, you know, Cam has to do a better job, or the outside backs have to do a better job of just demanding the ball in a, in a negative space. It'll open up the space for us to play. So as this ball is going in, right, he's looking to play Gear, but it's not on. Right now, so I think Cam, you're just not doing any him any favors by being this close to your defender. You're not talking to him. You're not, you know, it's you know, no one's really open here. Not this isn't, isn't an easy pass for him to play. And Rafael, in this case, if that's not on, just put the ball in his face. Put the ball into it behind the defense. You have you have the range in your passing just to knock the ball into an area that's dangerous. Don't force anything down the middle of the field. We've had a number of these passes turn into dangerous counterattacks. Um, from this, these positions, and I think we just, we shouldn't try to do anything extra when we're in this part of the field, trying to slot a pass through a line of defenders, uh, especially with our weaker foot. Okay, so if you don't, you can't find Garrett immediately. Look to play wide first before we try to play these balls into the middle. And I think you can see how dangerous that can be because we're set up to attack. So again, for me, the outside backs again in the, in the first half. You'll notice I asked Tyler to be to work back for Jake as he's getting pressured. you got to recognize that when players aren't winning, necessarily winning their battles, right? They're under pressure. They need help. we got to recognize this moment here, right? Raphael's un in trouble. He's in trouble. He needs help. And Cam, none of us are doing enough jobs, a good enough job here of helping him make a good decision on the ball. And now he's making a, and as you can see, he's making a rush, or, you know, he's rushing his pass here to try to find something, okay? I think we're just walking. We're walking. We're walking. We're kind of just watching. Get in a position to get the ball. Come back for it and tell them to play away from the pressure. This will, generally speaking, open them up, force them to have to run out and defend, and that will open up passes in behind for us to play. And as you can see, as this ball works around, again, quicker decision by Rafael, playing two touch instead of you know trying to do extra. Just get the ball to Cam probably. Right, so you're looking to play the right side of the field. The pressure's coming. Probably should just play out to the left. But as you can see, Cam is too close. That by the time this ball gets to you, Cam, the defender is here. We gotta recognize sometimes that we gotta drop deeper and force this guy to make a decision between sitting in where he's supposed to be or coming up to mark you. And I think if he does come and mark you up the field, now we have a ball to Daniel or to Jack or whoever's the attacking midfield on this side of the field. So you can see when a player is in trouble, especially our center backs, we've got to do a better job of just helping them make a better decision. And in this case, I think. You know, Cam, or I think this is Ethan or Jack, need to do a better job of finding the ball when he's looking for that pass. You can see he's clearly looking for a pass, and not there's not really many options. No one's instructing him to do what to do, and so he's going to make a decision on his own. In this case, he tries to slot a pass through the midfield because he doesn't see anybody else, um, and it ends up being a turnover. All right, here's a sequence that leads up to the our first goal. Just let it run out. Decent play out of the back. Working the ball in and around. We're not being patient. You know, get the ball out between the lines. You know, get a little fortunate here with this the defender slipping. You know, but it's a decent clearance. I don't think we try to play through them here. I, you know, I don't mind this long ball into the spaces, at least to break their midfield pressure. All right. We got to do a better job as forwards of winning that, that knockdown. But here we get fortunate we're able to get in behind um, and, and win that ball. Now we're attacking. Now we got them retreating. And it's good. It's just good quick, quick passing between players serve the ball in the box, right? We don't waste time. Get the ball in a dangerous area. It doesn't necessarily come off, but now, oops. But now uh, they're able to have to clear the ball and we're in a good spot to win that second ball. Again, move the ball between players. Probably should play the way he's facing here instead of trying to flick the ball on. Get the principles of play, just follow them. And they'll, they'll work for us. Get the ball in a good combination play here in the wide area to get the ball to Billy. He does a good job of not wasting any time to serve the ball in the box. Again, they clear it, but we're in good spots to win it. And this time, we play the way we're facing. Again, play quickly between players, and this is where the goal comes from. Now Daniel's working to that back post. As you can see, that run is there for us, and it's a goal. You know, what ends up happening in this play is what I was asking Jack to do earlier, you know, with his run to the back post. First of all, you'll notice that players are interchanging constantly in this sequence, right? The ball first starts off with his scene at the wide spot. Billy's at his position, Daniel's now in center position. You got Jack and I think that's Ethan. And you got Jack here. Good service in the box. They're able to clear the ball. Cam's in a good spot to win it. 
All right, we work the ball the other side of the field. Now Billy is the center forward and Daniel's on the right. Tyler's working that angle, right? Probably should play, again, play the way he's facing there to Ethan. It does go out to Ethan eventually. And now Tyler's in a wide spot. Now Billy has ch changed positions and Daniel's center forward and the scene is left. All right, we're com combining here pretty quick. We get a little bit lucky there, but we win the ball. We're in a good spot and we serve the ball in the box. You know, they don't, we win the ball. Tyler plays quickly one touch. We work the other side of the field again. Now Cam is the guy that's looking to attack. Okay. Now, as you see this play developing, Yassine is working to the near side. Basically, Cam is now our wide player, and Daniel's that attack and midfielder. Look at all these players ball watching. The, the, normally, you know, technically speaking, in terms of positioning, one thing that we have to do as defenders is that you have to be on a half turn. You got to look over your shoulder to see what the next ball can be because you're not. You don't need to be focused. If you're these five players, you don't need to be focused directly on the ball. You need to be focused on what this person can do with the ball. All right, but they're not doing that. Most defenders have the tendency of just staring at the play, running at the ball, and not seeing. Then you see Daniel work to the back post. 20 should be marking him. If I was watching this film and this was our team, I would say 20. Number 20 did not mark up here at the back post. He's, just, he's ball watching. He's ball watching. Doesn't see that Daniel's wide open. Goal. And they had players here to, to possibly stop this play, but at Billy's run to the near post, which is what I'm asking for, he's on the right side of the field now. And I think there's one other player. Ethan is now on the on the, the number 11 position. So Billy's actually number nine. Yassine is working basically the, the near space. As you see, players start to rotate. Players are moving positions. We're being creative with our movement. Good 1v1 skill here by Cam. Good run by Billy to draw two players, basically. This guy's ball watching the entire time. Doesn't even see Billy running behind him. He probably could have scored the ball if it was near post. Um, this defender has to run with Billy. Right? And as you can see, these guys are all man marking. Instead of being inside to help out, they're all man marking. And a good deep run by a midfielder, in this case Daniel, in behind number 20, gives us the goal. Good service to the back post, good header, and now we're back in the game. So a lot of you know a lot of the different factors there led up to that goal. Number one, we're serving the ball in the box. You notice we did it three times, only two times, you know, two times it got cut out and got cleared. But we're, once we win that knockdown, we're able to spray, spray the ball wide, little combination play or 1v1 play at a wide area, serve the ball back uh, back in the box. And this is where the runs matter, near post, far post. Um, we get players in a good position to score. But it starts with the attitude of just get the ball in the area that we need to, where we score all of our goals. Okay, That's the first thing. We work the ball wide for a reason to draw them away from that area. Okay, Their attention is now wide. We have players in those positions possibly to work the ball, either combination play or just 1v1. And then we serve the ball back into a position that they weren't expecting or not necessarily focused on. And we have got good positioning, good spacing, uh, good creativity, and good you know good runs in the box, and then obviously executing on the finish in this case um, to get us back in the game. But the principles are all the same. Players are playing the way they're facing. They're moving the ball quickly. We use the width. Um, players are rotating this time as, as I think we want to add to our games that players are changing position in the final third um, that's where you do that um, up until that point you want to maintain good shape and good spacing and, and good positioning but now once we're in the final third it's a little bit more creative players are allowed to come back and move around and change positioning not, not have to stay in the same spot um, and we work the ball into the wide areas which is a common theme for us and we get service in the box so just those those ideas have to be ingrained in us as we go into Disney so that we continue to execute on those same principles and get these ch type of uh, chances, easy chances on goal. All right, here's a, just a clip here of, of us switching point of attack and attacking and good, good hold up play by our forwards. And really just want to highlight, you know, the, where the space is to attack when we do break them down. Again, we, we're switching point of attack. It's hard to see here, but we're, we're swinging the ball around the back four, which is how we normally switch a point of attack. Tyler has a good, you know, good ball into the, you see, he does a great job of holding the ball up. Turns away from the pressure and it starts to attack on an angle, on an angle across the field. And here's what we have to recognize is that it's one, two, three, four versus three on this half of the field. Tyler being the you know the, the fourth player that we normally would have in our four three set attack, right? He'd probably be in this position, but we played a long ball to get here, so players aren't in their normal positions. But as you can see, it's two v one really on the other side of the field, right? If you you know if you play a ball into this space for Jack or you dribble into this area and try to slip a ball to Daniel, that's the ball that needs to be played. Now one thing I think needs to improve here is that this run isn't straight 
down line. This player now, once this, once we realize that this guy's won his battle, is working across the field, we need somebody attacking this space with a run. Okay? Now, if Daniel stays wide, that's one thing. That allows, I think this is Jack, to run into this space, which is fine by me. That it forces this defender to come in, and then we can play out wide to Daniel. So we keep, you know, keep our shape. If not, if, you know, if, if uh, Jack decides to stay here, Daniel has to be the one to get himself in a scoring position here. But not, not asking for the ball out here. This is too early. You should be sprinting across this play. As you see a scene, win his battle, right? Assume that he's going to win it, or at least you see that he's about to win his battle. And he's got coming inside. You have to now make it harder, you know, make a better decision, make it dictate his play by making a run across your defender to the back post. You're asking for the ball out here. I want you to be running in asking for the ball in here. And as you will rewind it, the run that Ethan makes when Yassin gets the ball and turns, see how hard see how he's going? That's the run I think you need from Daniel. You're slashing across the defense as you go, as he turns. And I think if had you done that, one of you guys had done that, I think you would have gotten the ball. In this case, Yassin tries to play the short side or the near side, which, again, I hope we... We've seen this enough to recognize that the space for us to attack is the weak side space between the center back and the outside back on the other side of the field, more times than not. Now, it's not necessarily all, you know, it's not necessarily covered here well. Ethan is on. It just, the pass is, it, it has to be lobbed. I think this ball in the air, this defender's doing a good job of making this a hard pass. You lob this ball in the space, Ethan's in on goal, probably, on a 1v1. Probably, you know, has this guy chasing him. A little bit of more of recognition of the space as opposed to the lane, right? The space is all of this. This all of this space is what we want to play. Similar to the number of passes that we've had, you know, from Billy in Cincinnati, and and um, you know, there's a number of, of instances in the number in the games where we're trying to slot a pass perfectly to the person's person's feet. Recognize that the space is what we're trying to play. In this case, Daniel has to recognize the space we're trying to attack, and you know, Jack as well, we're trying to attack the spaces. A space, and that's where the ball needs to go. I don't need a perfect pass to him right to his feet. Not from this distance, right? From this distance, I can use the fact that we're a little bit further from the goal to just play a little ball into space, you know, in front of Ethan, probably in a lob pass that would be on for us. But really for me is to rec start to recognize we've scored one goal like this where Mike got the ball from Billy basically doing this, and it's because he made a slashing run across them. And I think one of you two, have to make that run into space here to get the ball. And you see Nesta recognize that we're trying to attack this ball. This run here is what draws this guy away. And it draws and this guy's marking. These guys are trying to recover. This is he has to decide. Can I have to run with him or do I cover here? And again, where we should be defensively, this player should be pinched in, helping defend, force them to play the ball wide. But because we have they are not like that, because they're spread out, we got to recognize that this is the angle that we want to play on these on these type of situations where a player like Yassin or Billy is cutting in or Daniel, right? Any of the, the forwards are cutting in from a wide area across the field. As soon as they've beaten their player and have time on the ball, that's when the runs have to be made to that weak side space. All right, in this, this clip, you'll see a number of uh, different attempts here with service as well as some poor possession out of the back. Good combination play here, playing the what we see, getting the ball moving between players. I love the fact that we're moving, a lot of interchanging or a lot of interplay between players. All right, the ball's moving. We're not waiting. Get the ball to the next guy. Get the ball, keep the ball moving. One and two touch. It's a lot of passing here. Okay, they end up winning the ball, but we're able to get a spot to win the ball back. All right, it's not necessarily the cleanest play, but look, what ends up happening here is we get the ball in a wide area, which is what we want. Probably should serve here, but you know, with the left foot, but we end up getting the ball to Ethan to serve which isn't bad. Now we end up winning a throw in deep in their area. So let's scrub forward here. So throw the ball back to Jack here. Possible options here to work underneath as you see Garrett running into a good spot. I like the fact that as we work the ball across the field that players are looking to penetrate. Look, they have a lot of numbers behind but good quick passing here in a triangle fashion will get us through. But we play safe which is fine by me. Again, service into the box, forces put pressure pressure on them. Good first time ball by Garrett. Again, we're playing in, you know, getting the ball between players, moving the ball quickly. You know, almost there gets gets the ball to Yassine. You know, keeping keeping the pressure on them with good play overall. 
right? Between players, as you see, lots of passing between players, one and two touch. Everyone's thinking, everyone's involved. No one's really holding the ball for too long, which is what I like. Now we end up winning the ball here. They end up clearing the ball. And this is the pass. Sorry, I was playing that, that fast there. So this is they just cleared the ball. And then we get the ball quickly to Rafael. And this is, these are the passes that we need to eliminate in our game, right? That pass cannot be lost anymore. We cannot lose these. That's a third or fourth example in this game alone. And there's a number in obviously the other games as well. We're just trying to do too much, All right? Going to your going to your left is an area of, of improvement that we definitely need to, you know definitely want to improve upon that going forward. But right now, you know these passes we need to eliminate as many pass uh, these type of passes from our game. You know we have, we have a tendency to lose the ball from Rafael's position when we're trying to play to Daniel. Okay, get the ball to Cam. Let Cam see the you know play in from there or play across the field, right? Again. A little bit more spacing between our outside back and the four that's marking you may open up this gap bigger for for us make a bigger window between these guys um, these two players but i think we're static and then we got to recognize the danger this is a, probably the third or fourth example of us trying to play out through the back where our outside backs aren't recognizing and our six and our eight and ten aren't recognizing the danger or the, the pressure that the the backs are under and you know how much help they need and i think we need to do a better job of recognizing you know he's got a guy chasing him right he's on his weaker foot at least he's you know he's going in the direction that probably should be playing with his weaker foot just drop here just drop into this space get the ball to your feet cam force this guy to come at you and now you can play down this line and i think if we do that right if we don't stand here basically in a position that by the time this ball gets you this guy can press it okay i don't think you're in a good supporting angle again tyler you're standing near his guy if Jake had the ball, I'd say the same thing. You need to pull back into a position that you can get the ball. I know we, you know, when we work these patterns, we have you basically in line with Garrett. But sometimes, based on these guys' pressure, you have to drop underneath the play to be able to play either back to Tony or, you know, basically underlapping the the, the center back so that you can now play the other side of the field to uh, to Jake here, Cam. Um, it just creates better angles for us if we and more spaces if we just work back in a space that is easier for him to get the ball. It's a better pass. You ask for it draw this guy out of his area now we can play Daniel on an easier pass so just want to highlight here again what we need to eliminate or at least do better in our play overall is that the center backs cannot lose these balls in the midfield trying to play through look for the simple pass players off the ball have to help the player on the ball make a better decision I just wanted to highlight some a free kick and a corner kick here All right, and this type of ball that we're playing to me isn't great um, I'd rather it be more of a driven ball that attacks the back post, possibly in this area where this defender is standing. Right, a ball that's hit short and curved away from the goal is hard to score. So when I was asking, I asked Tyler after this, or I told Tyler after this, let's drive the ball, right, just with your laces so that it's going a little bit more flatter, like Raphael again, again against Loud, and we're trying to find the back post. We, we need a number of players running to the near post so that we draw players away from where we're trying to play. I think that's... a going to be a pattern for us going forward is that we have a number of the, the shorter players or players who aren't good as good in the ball in the air sorry um, working this angle across the goalkeeper and the rest of the guys are basically peeling out to the back post to try to, to either score themselves or redirect for the guys who've ran you know who've run into the near post to come back and score um, Rafael in this case and again I think that's Garrett need to work to the back post the rest of you work in the near post. I think we just need to set up better, right? We don't think we're as ready. Guys are not even ready for the service. We play the ball in when half the guys aren't even ready. No one runs after it, except for Garrett. Again, he's the one that's active in the box, so we want to find him. Um, we end up winning the ball here. Tempting service. Ends up getting a corner kick. I'm gonna go through here. And this is actually a pretty good corner kick by Billy. Deep, it's the back post. You see, he's able to get his head on it, puts him under pressure. Not bad. So, just a difference. I just want to set expectations again and again and again so that we're in a situation in, in future games. We know what type of service that we're doing, we know the runs we're trying to do. Um, each player knows their roles and responsibility. We can't give up good opportunity to score a goal, especially when we have a free kick in this situation or in this place on the field. We got to have a good ball to the back post. Let's let our best headers attack it, get us set up properly, first of all, 
understand where we need to run to. Players are getting their, you know, making their runs um, to the right spots. Uh, we talk about who's doing what. You know, Garrett and Raphael work the back post. The rest of you guys work in near post. And we get a good service to that area so that we can get a good quality chance on goal. I think we're missing too many opportunities to score on free kicks because our service isn't good and our understanding of our roles aren't, isn't good. So I want to set better expectations here uh, between the players in this situation. Whoever's serving the ball has to know that they're trying to serve the ball to Garrett and Raphael to the back post. Let's just set that right now. Everybody else is working in the near post. If the ball goes short, obviously, um, those players can try to flick it onto the goal. But if not, they're, they're spinning out and coming back towards the play and trying to get the knockdowns if there is a redirect um, or a deflection or whatever it is. So understand what we're trying to do from free kicks and corner kicks from now on, back post, Garrett, Raphael, everyone else working near post, work off of that. All right, in this clip, you'll just see some good combination play slash good individual shielding and 1v1 play. Um, not necessarily, necessarily all um, uh, team play, but I think it's good. You know, this is the skill that is needed by a lot. You know, some of our players. You know, adding this to your game to be able to take a player on and just hold the ball up when it's not on, may, maybe to pass. But you know, obviously, I want ball movement first. But this is still a good skill to have to be able to, sh to shield and hold a player off. Use good body position. I like that. Be able to play off of a player. Okay, so you can handle the pressure. Right, this is next level for some of our midfielders to be able to handle the pressure. Probably should be. You know, in this case, dribbling with his left foot, but he's, he's strong enough to hold the ball with his right. Looks to play with Yassine. Doesn't get the ball back here, and I think as this is happening, again, we, give, we don't, don't recognize the moments when we should be running in behind. Um, and as it, you know, Yassine does a good job here of keeping possession, right? Beating his player, going away from pressure, and it ends up cutting the ball back. And it's this type of, I think Daniel gives up on the play, because he doesn't get the ball back immediately, right? He plays here, he wants it back, and now it's, he thinks the play is over, kind of. And he's just kind of watching. And a lot of players are basically ball watching, including them. And that's what I want you to highlight, highlight here is that this run in behind, as this ball is cut back here, we got to recognize, start to look for space to run in behind. And this is a good ball. That's a good ball, in my opinion, right? And you'll see what I mean in a second. Like, that's actually a good ball for a runner. And I think you're just you're just standing. The time you've laid the ball off and, and, and you've seen it's dribbled all the way over here, we gotta recognize that a run to the back post is dangerous and get in. Same type of play as before when you seen cut in towards your side of the field. We need a runner in the gap. We need to recognize when this player, in the case this case, you seen has won his battle, is open and can serve a ball. It's it happens in a split second, but you're starting to anticipate it now. Right, you know, as a player, I would start to look for spaces as the ball's going away from me. Start to look for space now, now, and then as he shapes up to, sh to cross it, we got to get a run into the back post. Right, got to be actively looking for those spaces and running in behind. I think a little bit we gave up on that run when you didn't get the ball back initially. And you'll see here, I'm just going to highlight real quickly. There's a goal from the FIFA Club World Cup where Suarez and Neymar work in a similar fashion, and I'll let it play out. Right, Messi wins the ball, plays the ball wide. Like you see, look, what I want to highlight there is you can see his, uh, uh, Suarez looking for the space, right? If you just backed it up slightly here and let it play, I'll pause it when I think he's looking. He's looking for a little space right there. He's looking to see what the next pass is. The ball's going to a player who has time on the ball, right? And look at this run and a finish. That gets you goals. This is Jack, this is Ethan. Is it anybody running from a late position, from a position deep in the midfield, has to recognize when the ball is wide and the player is cutting in towards the goal or has time on the ball, you got to look to see where the, where the space is to cut in behind on the, on the blind side. And I think this is a good example as I go back to the film. You know, this is probably a good example where we don't, recognize that space another good example really where you see you seen cut back towards us we got to get in that's a great ball to the back post get in there and get on the, and get on that that's a goal for you waiting to happen billy will do it you do it when you cut in players need to run in on that angle either attacking midfielder recognizing that space or the outside forward recognize recognizing that space and i think we give up too easily on these type of plays 
where we could get in behind them with a good service. And I think Yassine did a great job there of finding that space to play into, right? Good lob pass to the back post. And I think, you know, by the time the ball was here, you hadn't moved two yards. I mean, it's just unacceptable movement off the ball, in my opinion. All right, just some decent possession, decent defense to offense type of play. Good Jake by Jake here to recognize the danger and cover Tyler, which is going to be needed. Um, probably a foul there, but the referee doesn't call it, so we have to play out. And we do a pretty good job of that, finding the next person. You know, now we've won it. Now we're looking to switch a point of attack. As you see, their pressure isn't great. All right, we probably could have played Garrett here initially, but we play in to the forward and then back. A little bit lucky there. I think the defender probably hit that to, to Garrett, but we're in good spots to switch a point of attack. And you, as you notice, Garrett's playing one touch, right? Which is why I love it. Okay, love that type of play. Where you see the next pass, get it to the next player. See the next pass, get it to the next player, right? Now I don't, you know, necessarily mind you taking the, your space here. I think you're doing a good job of working across the field. And the idea to get it to this side of the field is right to Billy because Billy and Tyler are on. I think this same as Garrett did a second ago with that one touch pass. Ethan needs to do that here, as you can see this ball's coming in, because Tyler's wide open, right? There's no reason to take an extra touch here, and by the time you do, the, the defender's now able to cover. As you can see, all of the defenders actually have recovered into that space, because they were actually expecting that one-time ball, too. They see the runs. This ball's coming in. They're, they're now reacting to the fact that the next pass they see is going to be into space, okay? And I probably, now that, actually, now that I think about it, maybe a one-touch pass back to Billy was on, and now we attack the center of space. But either way, either a first-time ball to Tyler or a first-time ball to Billy is on. There's no need to take a touch. Get it to the guy who's open. I think we need to eliminate this path, this touch here. Just get, to the next, get it to Billy. He's open. Billy can find the next pass. We can attack these guys right here. But because we take an extra touch, the space gets closed down. At least the space we want to play gets closed down, and we're not able to attack. So, you know... Some good and bad, so some positive and negative. Good defense to offensive play. You know, we work the ball to the other side of the field. You see the contrast between Garrett and his play and a number of other players, in, in this case, Ethan, uh, playing quickly, making their mind early, seeing the options early, and just deciding on something, right? And being able to play first time as opposed to having to re receive the ball to play. I don't mind the two-touch play, but I think the next level for a lot of our players is that they can play one-touch. And I think you'll see that against good defenses, one touch is necessary to break teams down who shift and cover and, and are determined to slow you down and be disruptive and play kind of a bunker style. We're going to need good movement off the ball, good one touch passing because you can't move faster than the ball. The ball moves faster than any player can run. Okay. And obviously creative movement, being a bit more direct, all those things factored in. But in this case, it just if we're going to be playing short ball in terms of combination plays, the in, back, and through is a one-touch combination that we do all the time. It's not a two-touch combination play. We do in, back, through. There's no in, trap, back, trap, through, you know, trap, and then through. We just play in, back, and through as a one-touch pass. Every every pass is, is one touch, and I think you got to recognize that that was on for us initially. But even back to Billy would have been on as well. In this clip, you'll see a good chance on goal by Billy uh, from the corner kick. Um, just see some good play here by Yassine. Good one-touch ball. Possibly here, you know, we've been working on our shooting. Possibly an attempt uh, opportunity here for Jack just to hit this ball with his left foot. But, I'm, you know, he's probably not looking to do that because it's his weaker foot. Passes that up. But we keep possession, which is good. Get the ball into a wide area. Good 1v1 skills here to get a, to get a corner. All right, that's what we need is needed there. You're facing your defender. You're receiving the ball. You see the pressure. Right, we're able to play you know one v one and try to get a cross off from a wide area, which has been dangerous for us. So let's scrub a little faster forward. And this is where you know a good ball to the back post. Billy's it, you know Billy's able to nearly score here. Probably and probably should score. So a good attempt here, good service into the area. Actually, probably it was probably more to the near post than the far post because the player flicked it on. But as you can see, it's dangerous because we have players in good spots. Um, and just another attempt on goal. We just a little bit cleaner there. We had a goal. But just wanted to highlight here the interplay. Again, it's good one-touch passing. The ball moves between players. We're playing into Yassine. He's, he's active and looking to play the next player. Jack's doing the same thing. Probably could have shot there. Uh, if not, work the ball around them. Now we're in a good spot to play 1v1. The guy doesn't have any cover. Go 1v1. That's, that's the time to go. Right? We're in a, a, the attacking third. The player has no cover. Attack him. 1v1. Try to get a service off. Gets a corner. 
and as it results in, obviously, one more time, decent effort on goal. Almost. For example of us, you know, doing a better job of plant building out of the back. Good one touch passing here. You know, we win the ball. We're playing after this. Here, good play. Get the ball moving. Get the ball moving. Get the ball moving, right? Between players. That's what gets us out of that. Not dribbling. All right, we attempted to dribble, it didn't work. But here we got to be cleaner, right? We're trying to get the ball to Garrett, trying to force the ball to Garrett. And the defender's reading it, right? It's not on for us to play that pass. And you can see what happens from this is that the player gets a good shot on goal, all right? And to me, again, Cam is looking to get forward probably a little bit too much here, too aggressively here, and he needs support. As you recognize, again, we're, we're kind of hiding, in my opinion. I think we're expecting a ball probably to Daniel and looking to win that, you know, run off of that. But I think we need to do a better job of just playing the simplest next pass and getting ourselves in a, in a window that's easy for, for our center backs to play. I think you're hiding here. Right? This is not a pass that Raphael can make in terms of a safe pass that you can make. And Garrett, you know, it probably initially was on right around here. If he just hit the ball to you, probably would have happened, but he takes another touch, and that allows the defender to basically poke it. All right? Use your left foot or the outside of your right foot. There was a small window, but it's not the greatest window here. I think you, we want to play our outside backs from these positions. And what again, what that does, if you just drop into a space to, to allow us to play your feet, is that if he does come with you, now Raphael can play Daniel underneath or attacking midfielder in this gap. If that's not on, just turn the ball back and go, go to the keeper. There's only one or two guys really pressing you, okay? And I think we need a better job of just eliminating these type of turnovers. This is probably the third or fourth example in this half alone. And there's a number, you know, probably a couple in the first half that I didn't bother to, to, uh, to, to pick out. But both of our center backs have to do a better job of keeping possession when the, the pressure isn't even that, that, that great. But the players around him have also have to do a better job of just helping the players on the ball make a better decision, talking to them, moving to an area that makes it so obvious that they're open, making the window, the passing window is much larger, right? Get away from your defenders, right? The forwards who are there are in a, in a position that can threaten the pass because of the distance. They're able to close the space that you guys have created between each other. Uh, and I think we need to do a better job of just getting ourselves in a little more negative space, using that space negatively to try to get the the defender to have to make a decision between where they should you know, they want to be, which is defensively back, and um, where you are. So I think we just need to do a better job of playing out of the back so we don't have uh, these turnovers lead to goals. All right, here's, here's the sequence that leads to our goal, and there's nothing really special about it besides the fact that we're just looking to play long and work off of the players who are winning the ball. It's just effort, really. It's good long ball, good intelligent long ball to a player, but really it's just effort to win the flick-ons, battle for the ball, and put the ball in the back of the net. So we work the ball to Jake, and it's a good ball by Jake. We're putting, you know, bypass the midfield to get the ball into the area. Daniel's running, good good run by Daniel to run off the flick. Great ball by, by Jack, uh, Jake there into to Yassine's head. You know, he's able to win the flick-on, put pressure on the defenders. Yassine is working hard, Billy's working hard. Everyone's trying to win the next ball, and it results in a goal. All three of our forwards are basically active and putting pressure on the defense. We're winning the first ball, we're winning the second ball, we're winning the knockdowns, we're fighting through the pressure, and it ends up being a goal for us. So just letting it run out. And the only reason why it's longer here is because I don't know what Ethan's doing. It just looks weird, and he does that. <laughs> it's a little bit funny to me, as I saw this the first time. But really to highlight the, the positive play out of this is that Direct play works for us. We can bypass the midfield as long as we're working off of the balls that are play, being played to the forwards, either by our attacking midfielders to win the knockdowns coming back towards us, or if they win the ball, winning those balls down, right? winning those knockdowns. And then if the ball's flicked on, are our forwards active and aggressive in winning those balls and putting pressure on the defense? And I think we, it, you can see it as it can result in goals um, and chances on goal. So, you know, good play overall by us. Um, way to battle back to get the second goal to go ahead 
And, you know, as I said at halftime, the team that went, gets that next goal is going to win the game. And this is the result of our pressure, constant pressure um, by all the players involved on the field, executing on our principles, um, taking chances going forward, being creative, being dynamic, and just not giving up on our type of play. And I think when we do that, we settle the game down, play the way we want, we want to play. We put pressure on them from minute, you know, minute one. But unfortunately, they got the first goal. We had a battle. Right, but still, the battle involves us still continuing, continue executing on our principles. I think we did that constantly in the second half, um, and we're able to get the goals back easily. All right, this clip is uh, for the parents actually, and anybody on the sidelines, uh, either on my side or on the parents' side. Um, I, I get I tease Gwen here a little bit. It's late in the game. We're trying to delay and uh, take as much time off the clock as we possibly can. As as the ball's coming. She does a great job of stopping it and throwing it back to us. And as you can see, I, I turn to her and say, next time, just let that one roll by you because um, we want to waste time. So just, you know, what you want to realize in these situations, and most people, you know, most players who, you know, parents who've played soccer understand time wasting at the end of the game when you, you're winning, especially in this situation where probably five minutes left in the game, these are the critical seconds that we just want to walk off. You know, you kind of walk to the ball, fix your shin guards, you know, Decide who you're going to throw the ball to. Take your time between these plays. Allow us to rest, first of all. Um, it's just a game game management game. Um, um, yeah, game management that we want to understand. Every parent involved here wants us to understand that when the ball goes out of bounds let, and we're winning and we want to delay, let the ball go out, of the, go out of bounds and just don't chase after it. Conversely, obviously, if we're down a goal, you got to help us get the ball back into play. Get the, get, you know, if the ball gets kicked over the fence or... Um, is, is cleared out long into behind the goal. That's the opportunity for you to run after it, you know, because they're going to walk. They're going to take their time, and we want the ball in play so that we can get the game going. So just really teasing, you know, Gwen in this case, but any parent involved um, in this type of a situation where we're winning, it's late. You can see that we're just trying to delay. And basically the last 10 minutes, there's not much for me to cover in the last 10 minutes because we're just basically getting the ball forward, getting to the corner, delay tactics, delay tactics. Um, and you can see here, I go and talk to Gwen real quick and give her a little, a little bit of advice next for the next time. All right, last clip here just to highlight a free kick to the back post and how dangerous it can be. Same as Loudon. All right, Garrett should score here. He gets a clean head on the ball, but ends up going off the left side of his head instead of his front. All right, and as you can see, it's a good dangerous ball to the back post. Again, set the expectation that now, and we only have two players attacking this, right? 2v2 basically they're not even really defending it but he gets onto the ball he, he's a good he's good in the air and so let's use the fact that he's good in the air and a lot of players at this age aren't good in the air let's find him to the back post and i think this is a chance that should have been a goal to really seal the game off but he was he didn't finish it this time but i'm you know i just want to highlight that free kick to the back post is what we're trying to do and how on it is for us to do it um how effective it is for us to do it um but overall, this is the last clip. You know, you can see the game pretty much is over by this point. Um, I, as you said, as I said in the earlier clips, it's it's really about our play that that I want to highlight because it's our attitude and our, our approach to the game was much better. We played our style of game. We 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 I think we were more familiar with this opponent. We played them a couple of times, so I think we were a little bit more comfortable coming into the game. But we didn't, you know, we didn't get caught up in the moment. We were able to play, move the ball the way we wanted to move in between players. I think there was a lot of good activity on the field in terms of ideas and quick thinking and and just execution and despite even going down a goal i think what's good about us now is that we're able to handle that type of pressure and make a comeback and come back from those you know making mistakes and so i think it's overall it's a good game for us from start to finish again probably our best game you know against a tougher tough opponent where they put pressure on us um and you know had their chances to score we're able to still battle through all of that, play our style from start to finish, and, and really, you know, execute on our principles. And, I, and as as the coach was walking out the field, I, I was talking to him. He's he basically said we had no answer for you, right? You know, we we, we there's no way we should have won this game. He admitted he's like there's no way we should have won this game. You guys had all the, probably 70, 30 possession. Um, you know that was being generous. And he said, we just, didn't, we just don't, I don't know what to do with my, he was just being candid, basically, is I don't know what to do with my team anymore because they, they don't have what you guys have. And, and that's really a testament to the way we're playing, um, the way we want to play. And when we're on, 
as you can see against the in the first game we're really on and in this game you know when the, uh, we're really clicking between you know the ball's moving quickly it's tough to, to beat us and i think we want to you know highlight a lot of clips here the type of play that really is successful for us the type of play that isn't successful for us in terms of individual effort and an individual type play in the wrong spots and just you know you notice that the total team effort is what's going to get us this championship right to get us to nationals and i think you know if we commit to it and we 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 all buy into what we're trying to do and execute we are an unstoppable team